From a trendy, modern and cozy cocoon just a few steps from the busy streets of Bulawayo, we sit down with entrepreneur Nani, the owner of Mashi's, an updated coffee shop and restaurant. Plus, on this week's episode, we exclusively feature socialite, fashionista and the creative director behind Matland Fashion Week, Amanda Mutangadura, as she gives us all access to the life behind the glamour. Last but definitely not least, our guest chef is the eccentric Greg Friend, who takes us on a shopping spree of ingredients for a North African dish infused with Southern African flair. To get some insight on Greg and rate his specially prepared meal, we have a posse of his rock climbing friends watching from the Hillside Dam's Conservancy. So, without further ado, this is Zim Cuisine. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Zim Cuisine, celebrating Zimbabwe's rich food culture, its people, and places that define its uniquely African palate. I'm Donna and your host for today's show. Now today we're profiling an intimate family-run establishment situated just a few steps away from the hustle and bustle of the city's wide street, but perfect for a family day out or even with friends. Welcome back to Zim Cuisine. I'm joined by Noni, the operations manager for the Mashes restaurant. Noni, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. You're looking lovely, by the way. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Now, Noni, tell us, what's the story behind Mashes restaurant? Mashes coffee shop and restaurant um, was named after my late sister. Um, it's a family-run business. Basically, what happened is, um, we found uh, a way to mourn our sister by uh, celebrating food and um, inviting everybody else to uh, experience the different uh, types of foods we serve at the restaurant. Um, my sister had a very sweet tooth, uh, so does everybody else in the family. We love sweet things. So yeah, we, we bake a lot, we fry a lot, we make different things. Um, my the chef in the kitchen is actually my bro younger brother. Oh, wow! Yes. Awesome. It was a coincidence that um, he went to chefing school, okay. hotel school, and he studied uh, food. And um, now he's our chef. Well, that's that's actually a wonderful story. You know how family just joins up together. You all love food, and as a way of remembering your sister, you know you join again with food, and you come up with such a wonderful establishment. Now, okay, tell us um, what makes Mash's restaurant unique than any other restaurant around town. Okay, basically, it's got to start from the food. Okay. The food is um, it's very unique. It's different. It's basic, basically, it's in the sauce. I mean, you can cook any type of food, but it's the sauce that you would make that would make, that would dress up the food, the the plate, you know. And um, secondly, it has to do with the decor in it, and that's <laughs> and that's where I come in because I am a natural artist, naturally born artist. Yes, so decor, I got to do everything in here. I'm happy to that it goes hand in hand with the, the type of food we serve. Okay, now okay, speaking of deco, I noticed that this place is just so unique in its way. So are you the brains behind its design and how it's set up? Yes, I am the brains, I must say. I should say. <laughs> Thank you. You're actually good at your job, I feel good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so now tell us, okay, what, what was the inspiration behind this set up? Um, basically, I, I just like different things. You just want, we just wanted it to be different. You, you walk into restaurants are so typical. Same furniture, same setup. Um, we wanted just a different feel of it. Something earthy, something um, a, a beach kind of feel. You're in a restaurant, but you, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you, you find yourself uh, saying, okay, today I'm sitting at this table, it's uniquely designed in this form 
tomorrow you're in another table and it's a different kind of setup on a different table so we don't have the same furniture if you look around the restaurant it's all different furniture that's there so it's not typical I was here yesterday you can come here several times and feel you're in a different place because of the setting Trendy places attract trendy people, just like the irrepressible model agency owner, Amanda Mutangadura. For a city renowned for the beauty of its women, she gets to work with the girls and boys who dream of living glamorous lives as models. Following up with another edition of Matland Fashion Week, it's easy to see that Amanda actually makes it happen. Welcome back, I'm here with Amanda. For those that don't know her, She's a lovely person, that's all I can say, and she's actually my modeling agent. Okay, so Amanda, tell us, your journey so far. Okay. Where did your passion for the fashion industry, for the modeling industry, where did it all start? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you Donna. Um, my passion for modeling started when I was 19, when I moved to Germany. And when I joined a modeling agency that side, okay. Mannheim Model style modeling agents and modeling agents and events management that's where it started has it been an interesting journey for you or you wish at times like okay i wish i'd done something different no for me it's what i always wanted to do and i'm enjoying the experience okay, something that good. i'm gaining every day every day okay all right all right so i'm gonna sound like a groupie oh. but Yes, I am a groupie because one of the amazing things that I love about you is that you are so strong on your craft and your principles precisely when it comes to the whole fashion industry, the modeling industry. I think that's one thing that makes you unique, okay? So now tell me, what, okay, for those that don't know you like I do, <laughs> what makes you so unique what? as an agent, um, as a specialist, an entrepreneur or a business person? Um, to be honest, um, uh, we, I'm really principled and as an agency we were really principled when it comes to the modeling world, to the fashion world. So we make sure that we're doing the right thing. Okay, perfect. All right, so, so far I know you've done Maternal Fashion Week which was a success, awesome. And uh, Face of AM, tell us a bit more about that. What's the inspiration behind it? Should we start with AM or Mad Fashion Week? Anyway, anyway. Right. Uh, Matabalan Fashion Week was hosted this year on the 1st of November at Heath Street Academy. Mm -hmm. It was um, our first event and okay. was, we were launching it for the first time. It was a great success and a great crowd as well. And we also had um, amazing designers coming all over Matabalan region. Okay. That's awesome. And for Face of AM? For Face of AM, it's a pageant that we host every year since 2010. So further into your craft, you are into modeling and what else do you do? Um, I'm a professional makeup artist. Okay. Yes. And um, <laughs> okay. thank you. And I'm hoping to venture into events management. Has the industry been kind to you though? It has been free. <laughs> it has been free. <laughs> it has been free. <laughs> okay. To be honest. Okay, we'll trust that it'll be, it'll be explosive this coming year. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> okay, heads up on that. Okay, mm -hmm. and here at Masha's restaurant, you are quite a regular here. So I want to hear from you. What's your take on their food? I love their food. Okay. I usually love the meat platter. Okay. It's really nice and new, fresh place. I really like it here. Okay, so you'd actually recommend it? I do. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Join us after the break where we catch up with eccentric chef, Greg Friend. Okay, we're right here at the Bulawayo 5th Avenue Market and I'm with our guest chef for today, Greg. Greg, how are you doing? I'm great! Okay, are you ready to take us <laughs> on? Excellent, guys. What are we going to do? We're right down here in the marketplace. We have all of our beautiful fresh ingredients over here grown locally mm -hmm. by our farmers over here. So we're just gonna continue and have a look and see what we got. Okay. Um, obviously down here, colorful, vibrant. It's, it's blinding hot, that's why I've got my sunglasses on this yeah, morning. Yeah, good choice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna do, um, we need a couple chilies here for uh, for our dish, plus uh -huh. we need some okra, also known as lady fingers. Okay. Mama, how much? <laughs> Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. 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 Today uh, okay. I wouldn't believe it, but it's uh, true. <laughs> okay, all right. Greg takes Donna on a search for farm fresh produce at the downtown city vegetable market. It's a bustling and lively place which has served Bulawayo with organic food for years. So what we're going to do is we're going to be making quite a nice, um, rich, almost North African dish. Uh, okay. Zimbabwe's history, we have had uh, the Persians and the Arabs pass through here. Uh, when they pass through, they brought herb uh, spices, basically. Food lovers market stocks a variety of imported ingredients preferred by the Maverick chef, and Greg's dishes have a reputation of being deliciously unfamiliar. Much like how he's ended up as a chef, adventurer, and traveler. So guys, we, uh, we here at Food Lovers Market, we've pretty much got everything that we need here, from beautiful fresh vegetables, fruits, we've got the butchery, we've got our dry store, we've pretty much got uh, whatever we need. We're gonna pick up a few little things before we head on out and um, head up and go and cook. Okay. So uh, let's have a wonder about. So what do we need? We need... <laughs> we tied up. <laughs> right, uh, we have the white meat counter and there's pretty much nothing like a young chick. Okay. You know, fresh as you like. And basically, we're not gonna have a whole bird though, we're gonna take our thighs. So, the reason we're gonna use thighs uh, is because meat on the bone, on the joint, joint of meat on the bone always tastes a lot better. All the flavor actually comes from the bone. So this is what we're gonna use, um, and that's uh, all we need, really. Right, uh, just what I was looking for, guys, and it's actually a wonderful ripe pomegranate. Story about pomegranate, and um, this is why English people are called pommies because they used to keep these on the ships. Um, this and lemons, which is why they're called limeys, so they wouldn't get scurvy when they had a vitamin C deficiency. So, thanks England, you bloody pommies. Right, uh, bit of red pepper. And what we're gonna do is, here we go, are you gonna leave the trolley there or are you gonna take it? <laughs> and we're gonna get a little bit of garlic, slap that in there, and some beautiful, fresh garlic and we also need a head of ginger all right we've got some paprika here that we need wonderful big paprika slap that in there um, right uh, we have a Peter how you doing good <laughs> Welcome, Peter. So, uh, why don't you tell us what you've got here, the varieties of, of this biltong okay. that uh, everyone's dying to hear about. Bacon. Excellent. Dry vorse, perfect. This one is like with, uh, chili and, and that's beef, yeah? Yes, and this one is called sweet. sweet and sour spare that's yeah. excellent. Awesome, and this one here? Excellent, it looks wonderful. As you can see, a little bit pink, and this one looks quite spicy. All right. Just the spices and some dry vorse, basically sausage that's been uh, dried up. So that's excellent, and um, I mean, it's just a wonderful snack as well. And it's, it's very, I think I will. Today we get to experience a meal cooked at the popular hillside dams, a nature conservancy just a few minutes drive from the city. It's a quiet place that's close to nature, water and far from the urban madness. So, um, welcome. We've basically made it. We're in here. We're about five kilometers only from the city center. Right. 
and we're here on the beautiful idyllic hillside dams it's a conservancy that's right conservancy and we're going to cook some some amazing food uh, right here on the fire and we're going to cook for the climbers so while we're here let's get on it <laughs> i'm ready right guys what we're going to show you out here in the bush is basically how to make a fire by rubbing sticks together like our ancestors did a millennia ago so watch your space come over here Bloody magnificent, and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. There you go, guys, we've got fire with sticks. <laughs> well, guys, uh, basically what we've got over here, we're gonna be doing quite a flavorful, spicy North African dish with a bit of a Southern twist. Um, so if you have a look over here, let's go through a few of the things that we've got. We're gonna teach you how to create a little bit of base flavor. We've got our um, diced onions, we've got star anise, we've got cinnamon, we've got cumin, uh, we've got coriander dried and crushed, we've got tomatoes, beautiful red pepper, which you saw buying today, grated uh, uh, ginger, we've got the okra, and we've got aubergines. We're gonna smoke ourselves a little bit of um, this beautiful paprika. So we're just gonna pop that on the, on the coals right now just to get a lovely little smoke flavor in there. And we're gonna add that to the dish. So what we're gonna do is create base flavor. So the first order of business when we create base flavor, when we do anything we cook, we actually wanna get some wonderful caramelization on the bottom of this pot. So we're gonna be popping this chicken in, skin side down. Get some wonderful color in there. The caramelization, the browning of the skin. Just get a bit of pepper in there. What we're we gonna do, we're giving that beautiful brown color to the chicken. And that's gonna give us that base flavor. We're gonna take those chickens out and all of the fat that's come out of that and it's cooking in that pan, we're basically going to be putting our rest of our ingredients in there so they can just soak up all of that flavor. Okay, so all of it is going to be. It's what we call a one pot wonder. So quite easy to do with your friends. You only need a small little uh, bit of heat, put a chicken, a couple of ingredients, and on you go. Right, you think your mom fell and What we want to do is start getting in some beautiful flavors here. This is some star anise. It's going to go in. We've also got some cinnamon sticks. Pop Hello. those in. We're going to put some grated fresh ginger in that we got this morning. Give a bit of a mix around here. Beautiful. Um, contrary to popular belief, the more butter, the better. So butter is going to give us some beautiful flavor. Um, after that, we're going to start throwing in our tomatoes, eh? another base flavor to this wonderful North African dish. So very easy to do, all in one pot and one, uh, or one pan, um, and full, just packed full of flavor. As you can see over here, make a little dressing, plate, and eat. I think everybody's hungry, so let's get on it. Here you go. Let's pop our chicken in here. Right, so we're going to leave that chicken in there just to stew in all those wonderful aromatics and all their own juices for about 20 minutes. I think it's time that you go and check on the rock climbers to make sure if they're still up there or if they haven't fallen off. Okay. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I'm chilling here with two guys, Tim and Derek. Guys, how are you doing? Good, good. Good. Awesome. Yeah, now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, those two gentlemen, they are rock climbers right here from the city of Kings. And as I told you, we're at Hillside Dam. So, 
guys, tell us, when did you start rock, rock climbing? You know? uh, grew up rock climbing okay. in a different in a different manner. Like we grew up in Metopus, which is a World Heritage site. Just sort. Okay. These are actually the foothills of Metopus. So we used to go out there as kids and scramble over rocks and such. And then we learned later on in life that you can go much higher with ropes. Okay, and not nice. Break things and you fall. So, Jeez. Um, <laughs> myself, I actually got into it properly from Derek um, about a year and a half ago. He's been doing it quite a while. Now. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. Kept on all over. And then, yeah, I got back here and realized that there was not a lot of climbing happening here. It's, um, it's just strange because we've got so much incredible rock around us. Okay. So, yeah. this year of climbing is kind of this phase from mountaineering into climbing as it is now. Okay. Um, this is a new area of climbing. You see, I don't know if you see those bolts that we've got up in the rock. This is a uh -huh. new development as well. Oh. These little hangers that we put here. So, you climb up as you go along, you clip in with these these bad boys and you clip the rope in it. So, when you fall, you don't. You don't die. All right. So you've had experiences of where you've fallen before. We have fallen. We have fallen. We've got this posted stamp um, matcha, which we use when anything kind of less okay. than um, six or seven meters. But um, yeah, I mean, climbing is falling. Okay. And falling is climbing. If you're not falling, you're not climbing. Get all you just. Uh, well, the target is you know all the climbs have got different difficulty grades. Okay. So we push ourselves to climb as hard as we can. So we push, we say we're pushing the grades, so we're trying to climb more and more difficult climbs. Okay. That's the way we, we, we say that we're trying to progress. Okay, no. Nice. Rather than a height thing. You yeah. could do a very easy long one uh -huh. or a very hard short one. How would you rate this place? Uber fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's a great spot. It's um, super accessible. Um, it's like a little mini Central Park in Blue Air. It's, Towns all around us, but once you get in here, you can't hear any of it. You can't hear any traffic. You can't hear hear an occasional plane or some kids playing. That's it. So it's um, it's a beautiful spot, and apart from its scenic value, it's got some really great rock in here. Um, predominantly bouldering, which is the kind of climbing you do when you fall into a mat and you don't bother with ropes because it's not so high. But um, a world-class climb, just right here in Bulawayo. So <laughs> I've known Gobi for many years. Um, is this a, a rated program? It's okay, child friendly? <laughs> no. Uh, Greg, I met a long time ago through my brother in his wild baboon days. He was working okay. as a, a river boarder up in Victoria Falls, doing some wild stunts and, and living the life up there. He, he's since returned to his little hometown of Bulawayo and got a cute little family that he's growing there. But okay. once in a while, you can see the glint in his eye when the, the wild child comes out. Okay. But yeah, good to see him. Good to see that he's cooking us some some chicken and okra in a pot or something down there, so it'll be good to get some, some food in this after All this. Right. So you're on food. This food is fantastic. It's, it is fantastic. Um, well, I don't get free meals unless I say. Okay, We have taken you on an urban exploration of Bulawayo's culinary offering and the ingredients needed to make good, hearty food. But most of all, you have met the people who give the city some of its upbeat vibe. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Zim Cuisine, food made with a love of Africa.